Hi everyone, peace be with you. My name is Sheila. Welcome to the last episode of our online study series, Rise Above. Thank you so much for joining us and I'm really excited to hear what Father Terence Pereira will be teaching us today. So let's get right into it. Let's prepare the space around us, get your Bible, your journal, and of course, prepare our hearts to hear what God has to say to us today. Merry Easter to every one of you! Oops, Happy Easter. Really? What does Mary mean? In the old English, it means blessed. Welcome once again. So who did you connect with after our last session? Who did you Skype with? Who did you call? What was the result? What was the outcome? Did you enjoy that conversation? Did you feel that you brought the Lord to this one person? Did you bring hope to this person? I hope so. Today, as we continue on in our journey of faith during this Easter season, I invite you, sisters and brothers, to consider what has been going on in the past, in the near past. You know, there was a Friday in which the government was going to make an announcement. We knew that the Prime Minister was going to come on to speak about further measures. What happened? He was supposed to speak at 4 o'clock. By 2 o'clock, word got out, the supermarkets were full, plenty of people. Why this hoarding? Why this rush? Anxiety? Fear? What if we run out of food? So this is where, sisters and brothers, we invite you once again to rise above your fear. To rise above self-preservation. Yes, it is important to preserve ourselves. It is important to survive. But I invite you to go further because this is the Easter season and we must be the people of the resurrection. We must be people of faith. And let's put our faith into action. So I invite you to take your Bibles, turn to Luke's Gospel. We turn to chapter 10. Verse 29. But the man was anxious to justify himself and said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hand of brigands. They took all he had, beat him, and then made off, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be traveling down the same road. But when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite came to the place, saw him, and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveller, who came up upon him, was moved with compassion when he saw him. He went up and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. He then lifted him on his own mount, carried him to the inn, and looked after him. Next day, he took out two denarii and handed them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and on my way back, I will make good any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who fell into the brigand's hand? The one who took pity on him, he replied, Jesus said to him, Go and do the same yourself. And who is my neighbor? If we keep focusing on ourselves, and if we keep looking at what are my needs, 
if we keep looking at how can I survive? We must remember this, sisters and brothers. There are those who are in a worse position than we are. Yes, our government is looking after the people. Those who are freelancers, the government is looking after them. But did you know, sisters and brothers, there are those who have fallen through the crack. They don't meet the minimum requirement for the government's assistance. What is going to happen to these neighbours of ours? Who is the neighbour? Not the one living in your block or the next block. If we look to the scripture text, the Samaritan and the Jew, they don't get along. They don't even talk to each other. Now the neighbour cannot be just the person that I know. The neighbour must be the person that I do not know. But I've heard from so and so that this person is in need. We need to rise above ourselves. We need to rise above and be brave. We need to rise above and be bold. You look at the Samaritan. He went up to the man. Why is it that the priest, the Levite, did not go up to the man? They had their own biasness. They had their own reservations. So this man is wounded. He's on the ground. If the priest touches him, he may not be clean. And therefore, when he goes to the temple, would he be able to offer the sacrifices? So he thought to himself, no. And so he left that man who is in need. Now, sisters and brothers, if we all look after ourselves, then that man who was on the road, that man will still be there. So the example I gave, the freelance people, when they run out of money, who is going to help them? Will you be brave enough? Will you be bold enough to step forward, to say, I will look after some of these people. I will try and find out who they are. You see, the Samaritan, when he helped out the Jew, it wasn't that he was going to get paid back by the Jew. The Jew did not know him. The Samaritan would have moved on with his life. It may have taken days before the Jew was able to walk. All the Jew would know is, I am thankful to a man who came to my help. That Jew might not even know that this was a Samaritan who helped him. So would we have that courage to take that bold step that the Samaritan took? And here is Jesus inviting us during the season of Easter and beyond to be that neighbour. So I invite you, sisters and brothers, also to look into the Psalms. If you look at Psalm 23 again, the Lord is always walking with me, and the Lord is always looking after me. So what do I need to fear? Now after you have hoarded all the food stuff, you know, you've kept everything, and then when the stricter measures are lifted, would you have a whole cupboard of toilet rolls? A whole cupboard of canned food? And then you might be wondering what to do. Now is the time to be bold. Now is the time to act. So I invite you, sisters and brothers, to look beyond your house, beyond your household, Look beyond your friends. Who else can you reach out to? And when you think about who you can reach out to, do not think about whether that person is a Hindu, a Muslim, a Taoist. Look to see he, she is a human being. 
you reaching out to them, you touching them, is also touching your own heart. Because as you give love, the love in your heart will grow. Now isn't it true in the commandments, uh, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So if you have hoarded all these things, should you not also get all these things for your neighbor? I love myself, so I have all this food. So I should also love my neighbor with the same amount of food. And then if you say, I have bought so much that I have no money left. That is not true. You have some money left. Can you give that some money to your neighbor? Can you not buy food for your neighbor? Who is the neighbor? The one staying five blocks away, which you know of. Who is the neighbor? That auntie who is staying three blocks away. No one has visited. Now I'm not saying go and visit them. Make a call. Write a note. Let them know that you're thinking about them. So sisters and brothers, will you be bold enough to find out who is in need and then get food delivered to this person? Will you take that trouble to go that extra mile? The Samaritan did. He didn't just wrap up his wounds, leave him in the inn, and then went off on his way. He said, when I come back, I will pay the extra. So if you can afford to buy $100, $200 worth of food and necessities for yourself, can you not spare some for your neighbor? How much? Leave it to you. But do have a consideration. Do have a thought for your neighbor. And when you do this, you will rise above yourself. You'll truly rise with Jesus Christ. You will truly be living the resurrected life. And when you do this, you will be worshipping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Remember, this is the invitation of Jesus, the call of Jesus, the statement of Jesus in John's Gospel in chapter 4 with the Samaritan woman at the well. You worship what you do not know. The woman said, we worship in this mountain, but you all said in Jerusalem. Jesus said, you worship what you do not know. And Jesus went on to say, you will worship in spirit and in truth. This, living by the Spirit, living the truth of the Gospel, is also worship of the Lord. And if you worship in spirit and in truth, sisters and brothers, when we begin to celebrate the Eucharist at a later stage, you will be celebrating the Eucharist at a different level. At the Eucharist, Jesus is being given to us by our Father. What do we return to God our Father? Yes, we return Jesus to God our Father, but along with our offering, along with our worship. Our worship in spirit and in truth becomes deeper, more fruitful when we rise up from our self-centeredness, from our lowliness, to live in boldness, to worship in spirit and in truth. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we're really happy to have you journey with us for all four sessions. Before you log off, remember to head back to the Rise Above Facebook group and post your reflections to the questions that are there. As always, take the chance to connect with a few other people by responding to their comments and maybe even offering to pray for some of them. Yeah, we all know we could do with more prayers in this time. And with that, we have come to the end of our four-part series, How Has It Been For You, Sheila? 
Um, really exciting actually. I'm really glad with how we as a church managed to rise above our situation and still connect with each other on this platform. We hope you have been blessed by all the sharings. St Paul encourages us in scripture, for we are more than conquerors to Christ who loves us. This is the reason for our confidence to be able to say, let us rise above our circumstances, come what may. Amen to that. For those of you who have not done so, do go to our Facebook page, Office for the New Evangelization, and click the thumbs up button to like us. This will enable you to receive updates for our upcoming programs or whatever sessions that we may have next. Once again, thank you for joining us. Stay safe, stay hopeful, and remember to share all that you have learned through these sessions with someone else. Thank you and God bless.